but I've spent countless hours researching and testing different prompts to see what gets the best result. In this video, I've distilled it all down to 10 levels prompt engineering. We will go from the basics all the way to the expert techniques that recently won Singapore's prompt engineering competition. So let's start now. Level one, just telling it what you want. At this level, you're just basically mindlessly telling ChatGPT what you want out of it. No real thought behind it. Sometimes you get good results, sometimes you don't. This is me just basically telling ChatGPT to summarize a Wikipedia article. A pretty easy task and it does fine, but there are a lot of ways we can improve on this. Level two, basic formatting. Small things like formatting can make a surprisingly big difference. For instance, just adding some dashes to separate your prompt can greatly help ChatGPT understand the different sections of your prompt. Right now, it might not make that big of a difference, but as our prompts get more complex, it's huge. Other simple formatting-esque things that make a big difference are being nice, avoiding negatives, and even begging and pleading. Some research indicates that being polite in your prompts helps large language models with their accuracy. Even if being nice didn't improve responses, I'd probably still do it anyways, just because I don't want to get in the habit of being a demanding jerk. No one's quite sure why, but large language models seem to perform better when you tell it to do something rather than to not do something. My pet theory is that it's just like our brains, for instance, don't think of an elephant, and you thought of an elephant. I use this one sparingly, but it's been shown that appealing to intense emotions can improve the responses of large language models. Some examples of this are saying something like, this is really important to my job that you get this right. Or, I'm going to show your response to my grandma and I want her to be proud of me, so please get it right. Similarly, you can threaten ChatGPT. This works too. Personally, I don't do it. Just in case AI takes over the world, I want to be on the friendly side of the robots. Level 3. Focus Requests Here's where we really start to see an uptick in quality responses. Level 3 is all about being clear and focused with what you want out of the chatbot. For instance, you don't want to say, make the response pretty. Instead, write, please respond with headings, subheadings, and tables, for instance. Or maybe you only want certain information. Tell it what you do and don't want in the response. So this right here is an example of a bad request. There's so much ambiguity in it. And honestly, this one's so ingrained in me, I kind of had a hard time making a bad request. You see, I told it to do columns right here, and that guided it towards making a table. So take a look at this second. Super specific. Here is some data. Put it in a table. I only want the columns class level, name, major, order it by class level, and then at the very end, tell me what Carl's major is. Boom. Got exactly what I wanted. Level four. Give examples. This is our first somewhat advanced prompting technique, and if you've heard the term few shot, this is what they're talking about. Basically, you want to give ChatGPT some example inputs and some example outputs. Let's take a look at an example. Here, I give a quick description of what I want. Extract the info from the text of this LinkedIn page. As an example, I'm going to use my CEO's LinkedIn page, and I'm going to put the example output in the format that I want. Lastly, I'm going to copy and paste a LinkedIn page, Here's mine, for example. And without any specifics in just one example, it responds perfectly and in the right format. If you have supervision, you may have noticed it missed my last job where I've briefly worked in marketing. There are a handful of techniques to make sure it doesn't miss any information like that. But one of the easiest is level five, self-reflection. Hey, ChatGPT, did you miss anything? This one is almost too easy. Large language models are statistically better at evaluating than generating. So by asking this question, you're really playing to ChatGPT's strengths. Level 6. Nail the system prompt. This is a big one. I'm not going to dive too deep into it because I'm working on a video right now that's all about the system prompt, but the gist of it is a special set of instructions that guides ChatGPT to answer how you want it to answer. I use the system prompt a little bit differently than most people I've seen, and I'll, I'll leave a link to the format in the description below. But the gist of it is, I try to give as much context to ChatGPT about me and what I want out of it. I tell it I'm a software engineer, I prefer X programming language, and I prefer short answers with follow-up questions rather than huge walls of text, etc, etc. 
So make sure to add this in. It'll only take five minutes and it will improve all the responses from there on out. Level seven, use personas. Say you have a simple riddle. I see a glass door with push written on it in mirror writing. Should I push or pull the door? Most of us intuitively know that because it's in mirror writing, we should probably pull the door. ChatGPT, however, confidently gets this wrong. Well, sometimes it's as easy as telling ChatGPT to just be an expert in whatever we're asking about. A few studies I looked at showed that just by using personas, large language models improved 6 to 20% in the accuracy of their responses. And it just blows my mind that you can get that much better results just by saying act as whatever. Level 8. Chain of Thought Another way to get ChatGPT to handle tough problems is to ask it to explain its thought process. I use this in almost all of my prompts it works so well. There has been a lot of research around this one, and it seems like the most bang for your buck is just to add the phrase, let's think step by step. I find telling ChatGPT to look at all angles of the problem also provides better outcomes. Level 9. Self-prompting. So you've learned all these techniques and you're still with me. Now throw it all out. It turns out large language models are better at prompting themselves than humans are. So we just need to ask ChatGPT to make a prompt to get us the answer that we want. Here you can see it write a very detailed prompt on how to solve a given riddle. I'm just going to copy this, open a new chat, paste it in, replace the riddle, and see how it does. It did some awesome reasoning and then got it right. Level 10, CoStar Framework. This is the final box. There are many ways to organize a prompt, but in my opinion, the best is CoStar. This is the exact framework Shi Liteo used to win Singapore's GPT-4 prompt engineering competition. Here's how it works. Each letter of CoStar stands for a specific part of the prompt. Let's go through each one. C stands for context. This is where you give it any relevant background information. For instance, information about you or the task that you want it to do. O is for objective. This is where you give crystal clear instructions on what you want ChatGPT to do. We learned this way back in level three. S is for style. In this section, we tell ChatGPT the style of writing that we want. It could be something silly like we want it in the style of a Snoop Dogg rap, or something like write it in the style of top CEOs. T is tone. What tone do you want the response in? Funny, emotional, threatening? You decide. A is for audience. This is where we tell ChatGPT who the audience is. For instance, if the audience is five-year-olds, it will be wildly different than if the audience is world-leading physicists. And lastly, R, response. Here's where we tell ChatGPT the format of the response that we want. Do we want a detailed report? Do we want it in a table? Do we want a fancy programming format like JSON? Or just one giant wall of text? Here's where you put it. Let's take a look at an example. Here's a basic request for a Facebook post advertising a new flying magic carpet. Basic request, basic response. This is wordy, ugly, and most certainly won't resonate with its target audience. Okay, let's try CoStar. First, I give it the context that I run a magic carpet business. Then, I tell it the objective is to write a Facebook post to get people to buy it. I tell it the style I want, basically to just copy successful companies. I tell it to have an elegant, persuasive tone. I say the target audience are people in their 30s. And lastly, I tell it the format of the response. Four sentences, no hashtags, and put in some emojis. Ah, much better. Basically, using CoStar guides you to add everything ChatGPT needs to answer exactly how you want. And that's a wrap. I'm coming out with lots more videos on fantastic ways to use AI. So if you like this video, you might be interested in this one.